Once upon a time when myths were as real as the rising sun, the mystical lands of ancient Japan were ruled by the Shinto gods, also known as Kami. In this realm of wonder and mystery, three Kami reigned supreme, shaping the very fabric of existence. Amaterasu, Tsukuyomi, and Susano. Born from Izanagi, the god who sculpted life and creation, these three siblings were not mere residents of the heavens, but the architects of the world's destiny. Shortly after their birth, Izanagi proclaimed that these three siblings would be the sovereigns of the skies and the earth, with the radiant Amaterasu leading them. Each god, a master of their domain, expressed their influence in all realms of nature. Their actions and tales resonated through time and space and have been ingrained in the soul of Japanese mythology, an eternal reminder of their power and legacy. Amaterasu, Goddess of the Sun Amaterasu, dazzling in her beauty, was a goddess who commanded awe and reverence. Draped in robes that shimmered with the brilliance of the sun, she was a beacon of hope and joy. Her domain was the boundless sky, where she rode her radiant chariot, bringing daylight to the world. Her powers extended beyond mere light. She was the nurturer, the life giver, her warm rays coaxing the crops to grow and the flowers to bloom. People look to Amaterasu not just as a goddess, but as a mother figure, praying to her for abundance, peace, and safety. Her presence was a comforting constant in their lives, her light a symbol of eternal hope. The Shikinen Sengu at the Grand Shrine of Ise, a grand ceremony dedicated to her, saw the reconstruction of her sacred temple every 20 years. This ritual was not merely an act of worship, but a renewal of the bond between the goddess and her people a reaffirmation of the cycle of life and growth that she so generously nurtured. Tsukuyomi, God of the Moon Tsukuyomi, the Lord of the Night, was the counterbalance to his sister's brilliance. Cloaked in the serene light of the moon, he was the epitome of calm and contemplation. His appearance was marked by a quiet, majestic beauty, his presence soothing like the gentle glow of the moon on a clear night. He ruled over the night sky, his realm a landscape of dreams and whispers, where the tides ebbed and flowed at his command. To Tsukuyomi, people turned for balance and harmony in their lives. They sought his guidance to navigate the complexities of their existence, finding solace in the steady rhythm of his lunar cycle. Moon viewing ceremonies and serene gatherings under the night sky were held in his honor. Here, people would gaze upon the moon, offering prayers and enjoying the tranquil beauty of Tsukuyomi's nocturnal world. Susano, god of storms and seas. Susano was a force of nature, untamed and free. His wild appearance with unruly hair and fierce eyes mirrored the chaotic energy of the storms he commanded. A deity of both destruction and renewal, he held sway over the tempestuous seas and the roaring winds. His powers were fearsome, yet essential to the cycle of nature, bringing rain to nourish the earth and stirring the seas to sustain life. Fishermen and farmers revered Susano, seeking his favor to shield them from the ravages of nature. His festivals were dynamic and spirited, echoing the tumultuous essence of the storms and waves he controlled. In these lively celebrations, people found a way to connect with the raw power of Susano, appeasing his wild spirit and invoking his protection over their lives. In these deities, the people of ancient Japan found the embodiment of the natural forces that shaped their world. Amaterasu, Tsukuyomi, and Susano were not just gods to be worshipped. They were integral to the fabric of life, their influence deeply ingrained in the daily existence and spiritual beliefs of the people. Their stories, rich with symbolism and meaning, continue to resonate a testament to the enduring power of these ancient deities. In the heavenly realms where divinity shaped the cosmos, a story unfolded that would forever change the relationship between night and day. Tsukuyomi, the dignified moon god, stood at the heart of this drama. He was sent as a representative of his sister Amaterasu to attend a grand banquet hosted by his other sister, Uke Mochi, the revered goddess of food. This feast was no ordinary gathering. It was a spectacle of divine wonder, showcasing the bounty and richness of the goddess's powers. 
Uke Mochi, with her extraordinary abilities conjured an array of food, each item a marvel in itself. Yet, as the goddess prepared the banquet, Tsukuyomi's eyes widened in dismay. Her method, though miraculous, was unconventional and, to Tsukuyomi, deeply troubling. Uke Mochi produced food in a manner that was unorthodox and strange to his eyes, involving producing food in ways that Tsukuyomi found deeply unsettling. This contradicted Tsukuyomi's strict sense of order and purity, actions that he perceived as a desecration to his sacred principles. Uke Mochi produced the food by spit and regurgitation from her mouth. She produced fish, rice, deer, and then proceeded to pull food out of her other orifices. Bound by his rigid principles and a stern sense of duty, Tsukuyomi faced a grave moral dilemma. His belief in maintaining the sanctity of the divine realm led him to a drastic decision, one that would resonate through the ages. In a swift, unforeseen act of divine judgment, he struck down Ukimochi, convinced he was preserving the order and etiquette befitting of the heavenly realm. But this impulsive act bore severe consequences. The news of Ukimochi's untimely demise sent ripples of shock and grief through the heavenly domain. When word reached Amaterasu, it was met with a wave of disbelief and sorrow. How could Tsukuyomi, her brother, known for his serene and measured demeanor, commit such a violent act? This was more than a familial betrayal. It was a disruption of the delicate equilibrium that existed among the deities. In her anguish and disappointment, Amaterasu made a resolute decision, one that would alter life as we know it. Unable to reconcile with Tsukuyomi's actions, she declared that she could no longer coexist with him in the same celestial space. Thus, she banished him from her sight, creating a rift that would eternally separate day from night. The once seamless cycle of day melting into night and night giving way to day was now a stark reminder of the deep division between the siblings. Where there had once been harmony, there now lay a profound separation, a constant reminder of the consequences of actions driven by rigid belief and hasty judgment. Susano's story, on the other hand, was a whirlwind of emotions and conflicts, a reflection of the stormy nature of the god himself. His demeanor, often rebellious and unpredictable, had long been a source of concern in the heavenly realms, but it was his defiance that ultimately led to his fall from grace. Susano caused trouble across the lands as he destroyed forests, mountains, farms, and even the humans inhabiting the earth below. This destructive behavior ultimately led his father Izanagi to banish him from heaven. Before his departure from the heavens though, Susano sought to bid a final farewell to his sister, Amaterasu. As he entered Amaterasu's realm, he brought tremors with him, causing the mountains, rivers, and land to shake. Amaterasu was rightfully suspicious of Susano's arrival and questioned his motives. She approached Susano, clad in armor, but rather than fight, Susano proposed a trial to prove his sincerity. In this ritual, Amaterasu and Susano both chewed and spat out an object carried by the other. Susano declared that if he could create five male deities, it would prove his sincerity. Amaterasu broke Susano's sword into three pieces. She then chewed and spat out the pieces, which gave rise to three goddesses, Takiribime, Ichikishimahime, and Tagitsuhime. In response, Susano took the 500 jewel necklace from Amaterasu. He also chewed and spat it out, giving rise to five gods. Oshiomimi, Hohi, Amatsuhikone, Ikutsuhikone, and Kumano no Kusubi. These five gods and three goddesses would later become the ancestors of Japan's nobility. Having finished the ritual, Suzano announced that he had won the trial, thus signifying the purity of his intentions. However, Amaterasu declared that since the five male deities were born from her necklace, they were her children. The three goddesses that were born from his sword were actually his children. By this technicality, it meant that Amaterasu was actually the winner of this contest. Enraged, Susano departed, and before long he went on his usual rampages. He destroyed forests and mountains once again, but what caught the attention of the gods was the destruction of Amaterasu's many rice fields, the very symbol of sustenance and life. 
After the once lush fields were laid to waste, he proceeded to flay a divine horse and throw it through the roof of Amaterasu's palace, where the goddess herself was quietly weaving. This was the final straw for Amaterasu. Witnessing the devastation and disrespect brought upon her domain, her patience shattered. With a heavy heart, she banished Susano from the heavenly realm, casting him down to the earth. Though Susano was banished, that was not his only punishment. At this time, all the deities deliberated together and imposed upon Susano a fine of a thousand tables of restitutive gifts, cut off his beard and the nails of his hands and feet, and had him exorcised and expelled him with a divine expulsion. His tempestuous spirit, no longer bound by the constraints of the heavens, was set free, and his stormy temperament was now a part of the mortal world. However, after the banishment of Susano, Amaterasu was still furious with her brother's actions. Susano's final act of desecration deeply wounded Amaterasu, not just physically, but in spirit. Overwhelmed by grief and betrayal, Amaterasu sought refuge in the Amanoi Wado Cave, located in the heavenly realm of Takamagahara. Her retreat into this secluded sanctuary was more than an escape. It was a retreat from the responsibilities and pains of her divine existence. The moment she concealed herself within the cave, her divine radiance was extinguished, plunging the world into a period of darkness. The consequences of her absence were immediate and dire. The sun's life-giving rays vanished, and with them, the warmth and light essential for life. The earth, once teeming with life and color, became a cold, barren wasteland. Despair gripped the hearts of both gods and mortals as they grappled with a world shrouded in perpetual night. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the pantheon of gods gathered, their minds united in a single purpose, to bring Amaterasu back and restore her light to the world. Led by Omukane, the god of wisdom and intelligence, a plan was conceived, one that required cunning and the combined efforts of the gods. Central to this plan was the creation of a mirror of unparalleled beauty. This mirror, forged by the gods, was called Yata no Kagami, or Yata Mirror. It was placed near the entrance of the cave. Its surface, polished to perfection, was designed to catch the slightest hint of light and reflect it with dazzling brilliance. Alongside this mirror, a grand performance was orchestrated. Uzume, the goddess of the dawn and the arts, took center stage. Known for her joyous spirit, the clever Uzume overturned a tub near the cave entrance and began to dance on it, tearing off her clothing in front of the other deities. They considered this so entertaining and comical that they laughed heartily at the sight. As she danced with a liveliness and exuberance that was impossible to ignore, her laughter and the rhythmic beating of the drums pierced the somber stillness. This celebration was a stark contrast to the despair that had gripped the heavens and earth. It was a deliberate ploy to arouse Amaterasu's curiosity. And indeed it worked. Amaterasu heard the other gods and peered out of the cave to see what the commotion was about. When she opened the cave, she saw her own glorious reflection in a mirror which Uzum had placed on a tree and slowly came out from her clever hiding spot. As she tentatively stepped out of the cave, her radiance once again touched the world. Light cascaded across the heavens and earth, breaking the hold of darkness. In that moment, the god of strength, Taji Karawo dashed forth and closed the cave behind her, refusing to budge so that she could no longer retreat. The gods then used their magic to seal the entrance to the cave. The deities Koyan and Fudodama then asked Amaterasu to rejoin the rest of the gods in heaven. Without much thought, she agreed, and light was restored to the earth. Her return was met with a chorus of joy and relief. The gods rejoiced, and the earth, once again bathed in her light, began to heal from its desolate state. This moment, when Amaterasu's light overcame the shadows, is eternally remembered and celebrated a testament to the enduring power of hope and the triumph of light over darkness. In the aftermath of her brother's banishments and her own return from seclusion, Amaterasu took on the sole stewardship of the heavens. Her reign was characterized by a sense of balance and harmony, qualities she embodied and infused into her rule. With her father, Izanagi, as her advisor, 
she navigated the complexities of her divine responsibilities with grace and wisdom. Izanagi's counsel was invaluable, providing Amaterasu with insight and perspective. Together, they ensured that the workings of the celestial realm and the earthly domain were in harmony. Under her watchful eye and guided by her father's wisdom, the heavens operated with a smoothness and efficiency that had never been seen before. On Earth, Amaterasu's influence was equally profound. Her light nurtured the land, ensuring that crops grew in abundance and seasons changed in their due course. Her gentle but firm hand guided the people, instilling in them values of respect, harmony, and gratitude towards nature and the divine. Amaterasu's rule was not just about maintaining order, it was about fostering growth, both in the natural world and in the hearts of people. Her light was a source of inspiration and guidance, a reminder of the beauty and potential that life held. The ancient tales of Amaterasu, Sukuyomi, and Susano, woven into the very heart of Japanese culture, offer more than just stories of gods and their deeds. These narratives are a mirror reflecting the intricate dance of human emotions and experiences, of power and humility, of wrath and forgiveness, of isolation and unity. These stories reveal the complexities and the simple truths that define existence. Together, these deities and their stories form the cornerstone of ancient Japanese spirituality, offering insights into the human condition and our relationship with the natural world. They teach us about the power of reconciliation, the value of harmony with nature, and the necessity of accepting and respecting the various forces that govern our lives. In modern times, these myths continue to resonate, their themes and lessons as relevant today as they were centuries ago. They remind us of our place in the grand scheme of things, as part of a world where the divine and the human, the natural and the spiritual, are intricately connected. The legacy of Amaterasu, Tsukuyomi and Susano endures, a timeless beacon guiding us through the complexities of life and illuminating the path to understanding, balance, and peace. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome to the channel. I hope I earned a like and subscription in your eyes. If not, that's okay. I'll keep making videos until I do earn it. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. I truly appreciate all the views, likes, subscriptions, and kind words and messages. Without you, this channel wouldn't be here today. That's it for now. I hope to see you all in the next one.